24 Secrets About Ovation of the Seas coming at you right now. Have your own to add? Leave a comment below or submit through our website at cruisingsecrets.com. When you first get on the ship, you'll want to do the mustard drill pretty quickly. I know there's a lot of people, but it'll be a lot less stressful if you go and you do this before you do anything else. Next up, start looking for the free activities that are on board. A lot of them don't open up until the day that they're available and you're on the ship Wi-Fi, so you need to check the app as soon as you get on board to see if there's options for things like the North Star or iFly. I signed up and did iFly just a few hours after getting on board, and it was a lot of fun and completely free. There are paid options for these throughout the cruise, but there are also free times. I have a video on how to ride the North Star for free that I'll link to in the description or at the end of this video. Things like the bumper cars you just have to show up for at the right time to do them, and they're free, so keep an eye out for those too. With thousands of people on board, you're probably going to be looking for some places to eat that aren't as crowded as the main Windjammer buffet. I recommend going all the way to the back of the ship and sitting at the tables there if the weather is nice. This isn't available on every Royal Caribbean ship, so take advantage of it when you can. Also, head to the cafe at 270. It's not open very many hours, but it can be a nice quick stop. One place that we went to quite often was the Solarium Bistro. They have a pretty decent selection for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and it's a lot less crowded than the Windjammer. Solarium Bistro, Windjammer. Solarium Bistro, Windjammer. You get the idea. Also, check out Fish and Ships on the pool deck. They don't have a real big selection, but they do have chicken fingers and fried shrimp and chips, as well as fish and chips and a fish sandwich, all complimentary and pretty good. They also have a little dessert, but it's available at the Windjammer, which is right around the corner if you want more. Another place to check out is Wonderland. This is a place you have to pay for, but it can be something different to do because it's not on very many Royal Caribbean ships. I have a whole video about my experience. Check out that video with the link that's on the screen or in the description below. The food was really good and quite a bit different than you'll find anywhere else on the ship. One tip on what not to do is buying anything from the Bionic Bar. It's kind of flaky and there are plenty of other people that buy drinks there that have drink packages or some other way to get a drink. It's fun to watch, but I wouldn't bother buying a drink for yourself just to see how the robots work. A tip I like to use on every Royal Caribbean ship is to utilize the free breakfast room service. There's a selection of items that you do not have to pay for, and they'll be delivered to your room. It can be a nice wake-up call or a way to get a few items in the morning without having to leave your room. Just be sure to tip the waitstaff a couple of bucks. Speaking of things you can do in your room, Ovation of the Seas includes a hot water kettle, which can be really handy for making your own tea or hot chocolate. You can bring your own packets or get packets down in the cafe. You may have to ask for them, though. We had to on our cruise, at least for the hot chocolate. Did you notice this little guidebook hanging on the wall? That's actually something that I made for Ovation of the Seas. It shows where different food items are, the entertainment areas, a lot of the really interesting stuff. It's great for helping familiarize yourself with the ship pretty quickly and having a reference, especially in those first couple of days. I've made this freely available, so look for a link down in the description. If you don't keep your cell phone right next to your bed, you can still use the phone in the room to check the time. Hit the menu button twice to bring up the menu and close it quickly, and what you'll see on the screen is a clock with the current time. Here's what it looks like with the lights off. It's pretty typical for the cruise director to have a morning show that goes through the day's activities, but one thing I hadn't seen before was an email address that you could email in a shout out for him to read during the morning show. So if you're on Ovation of the Seas, it's worth emailing shoutout at entertainmenttoday.tv and requesting a shout out. Now, I don't know if this will still be true even if Joff isn't the cruise director, but it's worth a shot. Here's the shout out my wife got. Elaine wrote in, she says, uh, Carolyn has a birthday on Sunday. Carolyn, all about you on your birthday. Congratulations. Have a super day. Now for a few things around the ship. There's a butterfly wall outside the theater. I'm not sure if it's deck four or five, but be sure to check it out. It's interactive so you can make the butterflies fly. Tap the four corner butterflies starting in the upper right corner and going counterclockwise and I think you'll see something special. There's this really cool sculpture in the solarium that kind of looks like the gummy Venus de Milo from The Simpsons. I just thought it was worth mentioning, so check that out. Another kind of anti-tip is to understand that the main theater shows are a little random. It's not that they're bad performers or that the singing is bad or the dancing is bad, but the storylines just aren't really great or make any sense. 
So just think of them as variety shows and don't go in with too high of expectations. This is even true for The Beautiful Dream, which everyone I talk to seems to be utterly confused by. The shows in 270 seem a little bit better, but the technology is much more impressive, so the shows end up being more entertaining just from that aspect. They even have a little intro show that shows you how a lot of the technology in 270 works, and it's kind of a tech demo show. It was really interesting to see, so if nothing else, check that one out. There are these big robot arm screens that kind of look like if they took a TV and put it on the end of the robot arms used at the Bionic Bar. I'm guessing they're completely different robot arms, but it kind of reminded me of that. Speaking of 270, there's actually a secret entrance or exit to 270 at the back of Deck 6. You just go down the hallway with all the staterooms, and there's this door that's not very well marked, and you go in there, and you're at the back of 270. Guests have access to everything on both sides of this door, but there's kind of signage to imply you shouldn't go through it, so I don't really know what that's about. I think it may just be that it confuses people. Also inside 270, there's this little wasp's nest beehive looking thing. It's not great for watching the shows, but it's a nice quiet spot. Speaking of quiet spots, another place to check out is the library that's off of 270 up on deck 6. You can get to it from that entrance I just told you about very quickly. It has some nice views, and you can still hear what's going on in 270, so if you kind of want to listen without having to watch, or if you want to be able to leave a little more stealthily, this can be a great little place to hang out. And you get some really nice sunsets at times. A general tip is to just explore and go where people are not at, and you will have a lot more space and peace and quiet than you might expect on a cruise ship. The Solarium is a great place to check out. There are these panda bears hanging off the side of the ship, but that little area that juts out on that level is actually part of the C-plex, and it has some great views. It's not the quickest place to get to, but once you're up there, you'll find that it's not really that crowded. So head on up there and enjoy the unobstructed views. There's a music hall on board with performers, but they don't perform 24-7. Sometimes there are guest lecturers, and sometimes there's nothing at all going on. So go upstairs to the music hall and enjoy some peace and quiet. There are these pool tables right outside the Diamond Club, which might be the Diamond Lounge, which might be the Crown Lounge now. This was filmed before they renamed all these areas. Going back to the solarium, there are some little observation areas on the side of the solarium that I think are usually called the solarium wings. If it's rainy, it's not so great, but when the weather's nice, you can get some really great views because they're not the most obvious places to go, and they're not usually that crowded especially when you think about how many thousands of people are on board. As you can see, I had the whole place to myself in the middle of the sea day. Even the back of the ship can be relatively sparse. Sure, there'll be a few people around, but you can stand right on the railing and get some amazing glacier views if you're in Alaska. I keep saying, a sunny day in Alaska is hard to beat. Now, if the weather is rough and you're starting to feel nauseous, there are a lot of home remedies you could try, and it's great to bring your own medicine, but if you didn't bring anything, feel free to head down to the medical center on deck two. Hanging on the wall there, you'll find a box of seasickness tablets, and you can just take as many as you want. I was feeling a little nauseous, and after taking one of those pills, I was feeling better in about half an hour, and by two hours later, I was about 90% better. Every ship has dozens of tips that can help you maximize your cruise experience. Keep following Cruising Secrets to learn more. And check out these other videos on our channel. Did I miss something? Leave a secret in the comments below. Or visit our website at cruisingsecrets.com.